Investing in a microphone is a great way to produce high quality videos. One of the quickest ways to lose a viewer's interest or to come off amateur is with bad audio. In-camera audio just won't cut it. There are a number of different types of microphones to choose from, and in this video, I'm gonna focus on the two types of microphones you should consider buying. What's good, everyone? My name is Philip Lemoyne, and I'm actually a full-time cinematographer, but I love to cook. On this channel, I'm not only posting cooking videos with some of my favorite tried and true recipes, but I also share tips and strategies to help you make your own cooking videos. So if you're hungry for great tasting food or that YouTube money, spank that subscribe button. So before I jump into this video, I just wanted to let you know, I'll put a link in the description to all of the gear that I'll be talking about, as well as all of the gear that I personally use when I make my YouTube cooking videos. So like I said earlier, one of the best ways to make professional videos is with great audio. I think good sounding audio is almost more important than epic looking footage. You're gonna want your audio quality to match your video quality. Audio equipment can get expensive, but you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to pull this off. I'll break down some of the microphone options for you at different price points and some simple techniques for capturing great sounding audio. So there are two types of microphones I would recommend to up your sound quality in your cooking videos. And those microphones are gonna be an on-camera shotgun microphone and a lavalier microphone, also known as a lav mic. The first microphone that I would suggest getting is an on-camera shotgun microphone. This is normally mounted on top of your camera and can greatly improve the sound quality compared to the microphone that's built into your camera. This mic helps pick up great sounding natural audio when you're preparing or cooking your food. The on-camera microphone can also help with the quality of your audio when speaking to your viewers. However, the further you get from your camera, the more the audio quality will drop. The closer you are to your microphone, the better. With a few inexpensive accessories, you can set your shotgun microphone on a boom pole and bring it closer to your mouth. This is great for when you have the camera more than three feet away from you or if you have multiple people in your shot. All I'm using is a $25 mic stand that's adjustable to different heights and attach my microphone to it with an adapter. There are some other adapters that go online for about $5 and they'll allow you to screw your microphone directly onto the stand as well. The last thing you'll need is an audio extension cable so that you can run your mic back into your camera all the way from the stand. So here's an example of the audio coming directly from the camera. I think there's going to be a noticeable echo from the room and maybe even pick up more noise from around the camera, including outside of my apartment. Next, we'll try it with the mic on the camera. So as you can see, the on-camera shotgun microphone is pretty universal when you add a few more accessories to your kit. Not only is it good for picking up great sounding natural audio while you're cooking, but it can also be used to capture professional sounding audio when you're speaking to the camera. This is why I would recommend investing in a on-camera shotgun microphone first. Here are some great options to look into. The on-camera microphone that I'm currently using is a Rode VideoMic NTG. It runs for about $250. What I love about this mic is that it does dual track audio recording with one being 20 decibels lower. If your audio clips, you can always fall back on the quieter recorded track. This mic can also be used as a studio mic for recording voiceovers later or things like podcasts by plugging it into your computer with a USB cable. It even has a headphone jack to help you monitor your audio. A step down from this is going to be the Rode video mic. It runs for around $150 and doesn't have as many features as the NTG version and it's a little bit larger. 
You can score this mic with a bundle kit, including the boom stand, mic mount adapter, and extension cable for 180 bucks on Amazon. Another option is the Rode Video Micro. This is going for only about 60 bucks, and the quality of this mic isn't as great as the more expensive versions I listed, but it is better than going with the built-in camera microphone. Plus, you have the ability to also use this on the boom and get the mic closer to you when you're talking, which is greatly going to improve the quality of your video's audio. The last super budget mic that I personally have not used, but is often recommended by a lot of YouTubers, is the Tackstar SGC598. This thing is only about 30 bucks and it has some really great features as well. I'll put a link to all of these microphones in the description below. So the next microphone that I'm going to recommend is going to be a lavalier microphone. A lav mic is most useful when you're trying to capture audio from someone that's going to be moving around a lot. So if you're cooking or preparing your food and bouncing around, this will be able to pick up your audio because it's attached to your shirt or your clothing. The quality of the audio coming from the lav mic isn't always gonna be as great as the shotgun mics because they are much smaller. I personally use a lav mic for all of my cooking content because it's just easier for me to pop a mic onto my shirt and throw the recorder into my pocket and start filming compared to setting up a boom pole and running a long cable to my camera. Also, I move around in my kitchen a lot and I don't wanna to have to reposition my boom mic every time I change locations. Here are some great lavalier options to look into. The first microphone I would recommend and personally use is the Tascam DR10. This microphone is on the expensive side, running for about 200 bucks. The lab mic is actually the long cable here, and it connects to a smaller recorder that captures the audio from the microphone and saves it onto a micro SD card. This device does not connect to your camera. Because of that, you'll need to sync the audio track file from the SD card to your video with editing software on your computer. This mic is a great option if your camera does not have a microphone jack input, but not ideal if you're planning to shoot and edit videos on your phone since you'll need to sync it later like I mentioned. I personally like recording the audio separately because if my card in my camera recording the video footage ever failed or it went corrupt, I at least still have the audio which I can use to edit in other footage over it, compared to losing both if I ran the audio into my camera and recorded it that way. I shoot mainly weddings and commercial projects. It's just a safe precaution that I take, but it's not really necessary for YouTube cooking videos. This is just the mic that I enjoy using. I'm comfortable with it and it's just my go-to. The next mic that I would recommend is going to be the Rode Wireless Go. This microphone is also priced at around 200 bucks as well. This ultra compact wireless microphone system has a transmitter and a receiver. The receiver is meant to connect on your camera and it receives the audio signal from the transmitter, which is worn by the person speaking. The transmitter can be clipped onto the shirt and has a built-in microphone to capture your audio. There is also a microphone input on the transmitter so you can plug in a lav, which is sold separately. This also allows you to put the transmitter in your pocket and clip the lav to your shirt, which is much smaller and less noticeable. The audio signal can be transmitted up to 70 meters and it has a built-in battery life that lasts up to seven hours. A super budget-friendly lav mic is the Power DeWise Lav, coming in at about 25 bucks. This mic comes with a six-foot extension cable which would be plugged directly into your camera. This is a great mic for its price and will give you much better audio quality than the microphone that's built into your camera. However, because it needs to be plugged in, you won't be able to get very far from your camera. A good workaround though is that you can plug this lav into your phone and record your audio separately, similar to the Tascam DR10, using some kind of voice recorder software or an app. You'll just need to sync the audio file with your video when it's time to edit. So there it is people, a breakdown of two kinds of microphones that I would recommend and some options at different price points that you can choose from. Remember that you don't have to have the best equipment before you start making content, just start. Start with what you have and you can always upgrade later. If you have absolutely no budget for a camera right now, I'd say just start with your phone. I have a whole entire video series coming out on how to make professional YouTube cooking videos using your camera phone. Make sure you subscribe to catch that when it drops or I'll put a link in the description once it's ready. If you'd like to dive deeper into how I produce my cooking videos and how you could do it with your phone, make sure you check out my full in-depth video cooking course. 
I'll be sure to put a link in the description once that's ready as well. One last important thing that I wanna point out is that it's not about how fancy or expensive your gear is. There are affordable options out there that can get the job done. A $5,000 camera and expensive audio equipment won't get you more views. It's all about the content and value that you are providing to your viewer. With that being said, I hope that you found value in this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and also check out my Facebook group, YouTube Cooking Creators. I'll put a link in the description. We're a community of YouTube cooks sharing our experience with hopes to grow our channels and make income with our cooking videos. Let me know if you had any questions in the comments below. I'd love to share all of my information and knowledge that I have to help you make better videos and grow your channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a ton of other videos up and in the works to help you create better YouTube cooking content along with more great tasting recipe videos. If you wanna catch them when they drop, make sure you hit that subscribe button and thank you guys so much again for watching. Aloha.